Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where together we are going to be jumping straight into the Bitcoin chart and I'm going to be going over the trades that I'm currently in right now, the targets of these trades and some very important price levels to be aware of over the next few days going into next week. So this is going to be a little bit of a larger outlook. I hope that you thoroughly enjoy. Uh, it's going to be maybe a little bit of a longer video than normal and that's because I'm going to be covering some really important uh, insights and knowledge to share with you. I really feel you're going to learn something in this video. So block out all the distractions around you and just give me your full focus during the whole of this video. And you will be happy you've done that by the end of it because you will learn something. I'm also going to be covering today a losing trade and how, you know, of course, losing trades are normal. This is nothing weird or, or bad. I actually want to share with you some of the insights about this trade so you can also learn, you know, how to approach that when they come around because they will come around it's a normal part of the trading game so yeah a lot to share in this video i'm just going to keep this one very professional and respectful towards yourself so let's just jump straight into what you're here for and that's of course the charts um, obviously just for your information i am in a long position right now and i of course will be talking you through what i'm looking for next um, in this video so stay tuned and let's go um, picking off right where we left off the last video that makes the most sense the last technical analysis video that I made and in that technical analysis video we were here on the chart and we were or I was anyway explaining to you live in the time as it was coming in the order flow and how for me this order flow was not bearish and why that lent to a high probability of a rise to the upside and of course during that video um, you know we, we, we did start to get that rise to the upside and that continued up over the following day uh, but obviously that rise before another drop in price and what happened we did get that rise before another drop in price Okay, so I want to explain now one of the long trades that was taken during this drop in price, because I think this is going to be providing you a lot of insights of how I'm managing these trades. So, of course, yesterday you also saw in not really a technical analysis video, but explaining to you why I got into a short trade. I was obviously in a short trade at the sim same time simultaneously, and that for me is always an aid. It's always an aid when I'm in a really nice short from the range high. When I'm trying to get in a long at the range low, I will always be more confident in taking that long when I have a winning short trade from the high. So it's, I, mean, I like to get in these positions where I can hold a short from the high and then I try and get in a long from the low. Of course, if that long gets stopped out, then I can just continue with the short trade. And likewise, now if I'm, well, I am in a long from the low and a short from the high, if we rise above the high, I can close that short and keep the long running. I love to be in this position. It's really, really, really nice to get into. But yesterday I tried to long a little bit prematurely and I want to talk you through this, of course, before we go into what's happening next. So pay attention here. I do think you can learn something from this. So at the time, we we're obviously moving down quite heavily. You can see the timestamps here. We're talking about 20 past five. So it's actually in this section of the chart. We were moving down here. And I decided to take a long setup based off of the reaction that we saw of the NPOC. Me as a trader, I will have... I will do my technical analysis. I will set my alerts at the levels that I'm willing to trade. If my alerts are not going off, if we're not at a level where I want to trade, I will simply remain patient for that level to be hit. Likewise, now, where we are right now, I would not take a long, I would not take a short. I would either have to wait for higher or simply lower. This, for me, is not a place I would trade at. This exact dollar right here, 23.20, is not a place I would trade. So I'd have to remain patient. Likewise, yesterday, I remained patient for a level. I saw the reaction, which for me at the time, was a worthwhile long we basically come down hit the level wicked it closed back above for me it was an actionable long setup but at the same time i'm thinking to myself for me this is a small long position as i'm very cautious of the massive bearish cvd and the fact it's likely that we head lower on the es which of course will bring down bitcoin so you can see here i'm trading the charts we did have a valid long setup based off of the reaction off of that npoc but likewise, at the same time, I'm still aware of the greater markets and I'm still aware of the greater context here. This is likely going to be a lower term time frame trade. What else did we also see? That bearish CCV target, which was down there around $19,549, had also not been hit. So there's a few weighing factors on my mind. I got, I got a long setup. For me, this was a technically valid trade, so I took it. But I was aware of the larger context in, price, in, in play. Thus, upon taking that long, I'm thinking to myself, I want to manage this well. 
If we start to move up, I will look to lock in that take profit relatively quickly. And I'm not going to hold any, you know, I'm not going to look to take massive losses on this long. If we do start to, start to head down, cut the trade. And I think this is what you're going to see here. Again, this is live in the time insights and updates that I'm giving. I told my team, you know, we're talking about 15 minutes later. Hey, I've decided to close the long earlier entries. I do not like the price action. I will wait this out for a bit. Okay. And actually that was a good decision. As we can see then another, you know, seven minutes later, I'm happy with that decision as we have continued to drop down and take out that low before another rise. So you can see, I actually want to explain what, okay, so let me give you another really helpful bit of education. So what, what made me at that time decide to close out early? Okay. So I think this is a, a skill. And it really really shows you that this is not mechanical. There are moving parts and I'm open to making informed decisions as new data comes in. When I take a long, I'm more than happy to close that long early if the data shows me to do so. I'm not stuck in my ways. I'm very open as a trader in that regards. Okay, I, don't, I acknowledge I can always be wrong. I don't have to be right, you know. So on this long here, what happened is we come down, we hit the MPC, we got our back test, started to change market structure. And for me, this was my actionable long trade. Okay, we actually then continue to range around for a little bit before we started to push up in price. And what happened was along this line, so we pushed up, which is this big, large move to the upside, but large move on the first sculpt trader, this is a large move to the upside. And then we actually came back down. And upon seeing the move back down is for me the reason to close that trade early. Okay, and it kind of looked like this. I was closing my trade around here early. Okay, after I, you know, basically saw price action that I didn't want. Not only price action that I didn't want, but of course I was still aware that we hadn't hit the CCV target, the bearer CVD, the ES weakness. All this together was an informed way to say to myself, hey, yeah, I've taken a long, but I actually want to close this long early, okay, for slight, you know, slight losses after the slippage that I occurred on this and also the, uh, the fees, you know, I'm ending with a, with, a, with a losing trade here. Nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be scared about. And it obviously would have been a lo bigger losing trade if I had held that, if I had held that long to stop loss and my stop loss was triggered, I'd have lost about $40,000. But because I closed it out early, I was you know down about one thousand dollars after fees, etc. Maybe about one point five. So it was nothing really major uh, of what could have been. And again, I was totally acceptable. You know, wouldn't have minded hitting my stop loss with forty k. That's a small percentage of the portfolio. But nevertheless, I'm getting out with a slight scratch rather than the stop loss being hit because I'm able to react to the data that's coming in. Again, we can see how that decision was very bright indeed as we continued to make our way down we made our way down through the lows okay and that would have been my stop loss being triggered but because i closed it early you know i saved myself that that downfall it's like i said here to my team and really this is what you call reading the market like a professional trader with zero ego read you know reading that price action correctly and of course very happy with the decision and i think this is what i really want to emphasize here it's that Losing of the ego, understanding the market is a game of probabilities. Yes, we can read the market and react. So if I'm able to see new data coming in, if I'm able to see, you know, a sign of weakness, which for me was coming above the highs, trapping some longs, coming back down, that's not what I wanted to see with the overall bearish market context that I have. It's not what I want to see if I'm expecting higher. So I'm able to react and say to my team, and you have to remember, I've got thousands of people watching my every word inside of these, this, this trading channel. Literally, I've got all eyes on me. People are ready and waiting for me to say something. So I think that, you know, for my, people might say that's added pressure. For me, it's not added pressure. I'm, I do what I do and people, people, people love it. But, you know, you, can have to, you have to acknowledge that thousands of eyes on you to admit you're wrong might, might, be hard, but also to yourself as a trader. How many times have you been in the situation where you've seen a reason to close and you've not because you've got to be right, right? You know, this has got to go up or, you know, I don't want to close this trade because I refuse to be wrong. People struggle with that in trading. It's a legit problem, okay? The ego. And I myself as a trader feel I'm very good at having no ego when it comes to trading. Yes, I have an ego of saying, hey, I'm one of the best traders in the world. Look at all of my results. They speak for themselves. But I don't have an ego when it comes to just losing a trade. You know, I will take losses. I will admit that where I'm wrong. You know, that that's part of trading. I think to have that ability as a trader to say, I'm going to cut this early because it's not looking good and admit you were, admit I was wrong on that long trade. I think that's 
very positive that you yourself need to replicate as well. If you want to be successful trader, you need to know when you're wrong and what to do in that regard. And that's really simply cut the trades. Okay, it's better to get out for a scratch than a big loss. Even if I was wrong on that idea, because you have to remember, I'm posting this live in the time as it's happening. I could have closed that early and price pumped to the upside. Then people would have been saying, hey, Daniel, <laughs> you said to close the long and then we've pumped. Mm, you know, I'm putting myself at a little bit of risk here. But for me, it's way worth getting out for a small scratch than a potential larger loss with the overall market context. And if price had pumped, I could have looked for really simply another opportunity to get back involved. Okay, I'm always ready and waiting for that next trade setup. I'm not going to dwell on something that's passed. Let's move on to the next trade setup at that moment in time. And then obviously, well, for me, it was kind of simple. I was waiting for that bearish CCV target. Okay, as we make our way along. Okay, so I'm going to now show you this, this next post, which is the long trade that I got into down at these lows. And please, this is very insightful. I know you want to know what I'm looking at next. I know what you want to know what's going on here. But listen for a few minutes because the education here and the insights I'm sharing are, are really quite valuable. So we move down to the very low. And down at this very low, we had a very, very, very nice long setup, but not for the faint hearted, not for the scared traders. Okay, you had to be really on your game on this one, and I'm going to explain why. So we came down and we hit that CCV target. Okay, and within this CCV target, we obviously had a few things to be aware of. Bitcoin has now hit the CCV target. We have done a swing failure pattern of the low, and we're also at the range low. So who would short here, I asked my team, who would short here? My answer is not me. <laughs> I would not short here because we are hitting targets, we're doing swing failure patterns and we're at the range low. Who would short here? Like, I think a scared trader might short there. You know, that's the light trade they're more likely to take. They're gonna be doing that, okay? So then I go on to explain to my team and let me show you, try and find a picture of what this would have looked like live in the time. Okay, yeah, so here's the swing failure pattern. Again, this is from the read-only channel that I have. Here's the swing failure pattern and what it looked like. This was a very interesting trade. Please pay close attention to this. This was very interesting because of the fact this only happened on Bybit. Okay, this only happened on Bybit USD. Where do I trade? It's Bybit USD. Interesting that it only happened on that exchange. But we got the swing failure pattern on, on only Bybit. No FTX, no Binance, no other exchange. We got this on Bybit USD. Um, and so for me, this was interesting. And I, and I did make a note because for me, this was important to note this to my team. Okay, as you can see within this channel. Um, I actually went on to say, hey, the thing I've noticed is that we've, the, we've took the swing failure pattern on Bybit only and no other exchange. So could we make another low to swing failure pattern or fail auction that swing failure pattern? Well, the answer is yes. So why am I taking this long trade? Well, the reason I took the long and I told everybody about that long is because the invalidation is easy. And of course, because of the quote above. The quote above being, you know, we've hit targets, we've done a swing failure pattern, we're at the range low, I wouldn't short here. So, <laughs> you know, this is, it's as simple as that, really. And so what happens when you have then this valid entry? You've got the valid entry off of the reasons that I've just explained. You then need to know your take profit, right? And my take profit was the PDEQ, which was sat at just around $20,000. So we're talking about quite a large move to the upside. And all right, based off the of feedback that you wanted, you all wanted a questions channel where you could literally ask me a question about my trades and I will give you an answer. And you can see this, I'm answering every single question that comes in, every single question, people are getting direct access and answers to myself, which I think is, let's just say very, very valuable. And one of the questions that was asked, um, well, obviously I was talking about this, Bybit has given the swing failure pattern long trade opportunity and what did I mention? When you've got an entry, you need the take profit, which I gave, and you need an invalidation and a stop loss. And guess what? I also gave that. In my invalidation is the low made where I've got the alert set. So then we have, or I've given them the invalidation and stop loss. I've given the take profit and I've given the entry trigger. That's everything we need now. All we now need to do is be patient and wait for that rise. Okay, obviously I'm posting this over on Twitter. Hey, we went long at the low. You all know what's going to happen next, right? Pump it up and destroy the late shorts. That's what I wanted to talk about. The final topping on the cake was the late shorts. Please let me just show you this a second. 
as at that low, we saw um, 17 million shorts, 6.6 million shorts, and at the absolute very low, upon hitting the CCV target, 26 million new shorts opening. That is an increase in that is an increase in open interest, positive, um, real high negative um, delta coming in there, and a market structure change off the back of it. Like this for me is very 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 positive if we're looking for a long at the range low this is like the topping icing on the cake large shorts into the low and they're unable to move price down this for me shows absorption it shows shorts taking profit who took profit at the very low there Moi? <laughs> myself um and you know that that's where the larger traders there have the influence on the market they can dictate what's happening next with their large orders and this was one of those times Large late shorts coming into limit longs or limit take profits. Price moves up and we come up where to that PDEQ very perfectly indeed. We came up to that and what happened? We got the pullback. Okay, I even think I posted this one over on Twitter here. So yeah, we got that move up at the time and that was into the PDEQ. And this is how that kind of ended with this pullback here. Okay, so now I'm going to pull a fixed range of the current local range that we have and show you what this kind of looked like in the time. So we had seen the entry of the long, we had our invalidation and we had our take profit one. Again, what was the take profit one? That PDEQ, which was confluence with the range POC. We got our pullback to form our higher low, reclaiming overall the value area low of the range. This is slightly changed overnight because now we have no this new data, but we are back testing the value area low and we've come up to the value area high. And we've come up to the value area high. So we're overall range bound between these value areas right now. So I think I've managed to explain to you all why I took that short yesterday. I explained in the video that I made. Oh, yeah. And actually, I, that was something that I want to mention. Somebody was doubting. The only, you, you probably noticed I never really show my PL. I don't feel the need to go on videos already and say, hey, look how much money I've made. Look at me. Aren't I great? I don't really feel that need. So you, I had a, quite a few people question yesterday, Daniel, why did you, why did you do that? And it's because once again, I have these people that come on here and doubt, uh, you know, it's like I said to this guy, like I've been trading over 12 years. I've called in advance hundreds of thousands of epic trades from the one minute chart to the one month chart, grown challenge accounts and made thousands of profitable traders via the knowledge and insights, insights that I share with my educational material. But people are here still doubting me. Well, here you go, mate. Here's the video that you wished for, you know, and really I will just say this. I, I truly have nothing else to prove if you've followed me long enough and you've traded long enough then you really should be able to tell the difference between a scammer and a real trader i mean at the end of the day chart champions was created from a want of the people this is why we exist from the want of the people and natural want and still we have people saying you know do a video i don't believe your screenshots so that's why i done the video <laughs> and you know that's that why i done the video really so you can see here for yourself why on earth would i need to make this up I have no need to do that. So there's the video, nothing else to prove. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it makes you very happy to see the amount of money that I made on that. And hopefully that can inspire you in some way, my friend. But I don't feel the need to keep on posting my videos and showing the amount of money that I'm making in my trade. So you, know, you can believe it or not, hey, for the people that didn't, no, no, that was the evidence for you yesterday, 100 grand in five hours of trading. Um, anyway, we move on. I hope that one made you happy. Oh yeah, and how much was your position? That was $2.5 million. Again, it was kind of just a day trade, sculpt trade that ended in a day trade, but that was originally a sculpt trade, 2.5 mil. Um, that's how I made 100 grand in, in the day. Um, and so we're moving on now then to what's happening next. So I've talked you through each pivot high. Why we put in that high yesterday and took the short? Why then we put in this low? And why that low was put in? Well, CC Paul were very ready and waiting for that done the call live in the time inside my group. CCV target, swing photo patterns, range lows, massive shorts opening, all leading into a very actionable long trade. I then tell you exact reason why we put in the high here, hitting into the range point of control on the PDEQ, pull back to the value area low. Why are we rejecting from where we are here? Range value area high in confluence with some really nice Igor sessions coming in here. Okay, you see two Eagle sessions lining up together right here. Eagle session, Eagle session. Gave you the highs there at around 20,400. Really, really, really nice actually to see that. 
okay, confluence with the range value area high. So I can tell you the exact reasons of highs and lows. I've traded them and I've shown evidence of me trading that. So now what am I looking for next? Well, I still simultaneously right now have the short from the range high and I have my long from the range low. For me, it's now a matter of patience. I'm going to be waiting for the rate break above value area high and holding the support. Then I'll be looking towards the NPOC. This for me is a major target above us. Should we break down here? I will look back down towards the range POC once more, which is going to be in coming in around the CC. So for me, I've got the CC below us where I could potentially get into a trade. And above us, I've got the NPOC. If we break above that NPOC with no signs of weakness and strength, I'll look towards my next level to the upside. Just as here, if we come down to this CC, I'm going to be cautious. I'm always more cautious on longs. And we break through that, I'll look down towards once more a potential swing failure pattern of this low or failed auction, you know, down to around here if we lose the CC. And if we lose that, then of course I can look down towards my next level and then $17,000. But for instance, right now, I'm not thinking necessarily about $17,000. I'm thinking I've got this range to trade. If we break up, I know my next level. If I break down, I know my next level. It now requires a level of patience and preparation. No, now is the time to be prepared for that next level to be hit. When that next level is hit, I'll come in and I'll monitor the order flow and make an informed decision of whether I actually want to then trade that next level or no. Okay, for me, it's as simple as that. It's how I'm coming in here every day and remaining consistent with my trades, with my analysis, and then sharing my ideas. And what I'm obviously very proud of is, you know, to be honest, we, we have done so many in what I want to believe very positive changes over recent times. You know, you wanted the read only coaches channel. And of course I knew why you wanted that because this is a gold mine. We gave it to you. We listened to the feedback. We implemented a positive change. Then you wanted the questions channel. You wanted to directly ask me questions with no noise. Well, I gave you that. And that was another positive change. I mean, here, I think you have to realize this is pretty valuable to have access like this. But anyway, moving on, then you wanted your daily update sheets back. We implemented a positive change of the daily update sheets. You wanted daily live streams. We gave you daily live streams, short and long versions, a five minute version, a one hour version. You wanted live trading. We introduced Eeyore and Kavi Nim on stream every single week. You wanted the stock market. And of course, this is implemented with the stock and Forex markets. We brought you that. You wanted speed runs. You you said, hey, the one and a half hour videos are sometimes a bit too long. You We want a short video. We redone every single video on a whole website into a five minute version. You know, we are truly listening to you as the customer and really trying to provide you with the best service in the world period. Every single bit of feedback that we have received, we have taken on board and we have implemented it. You can see for yourself the changes that we have made based on what you wanted. And we're, we're going above and beyond with every single change and we're making it even better. And we're, I can tell you this right now, we're working on things in the background that you're not expecting and that you're going to love. Why? Because well, why not? <laughs> why not do the best thing possible? And we're working on other things in the background which are coming very shortly. I'll just tell you that. But for now, you can see if you're interested in learning more, we've got the whole course on the website. You've got the speed runs. You've got the daily live stream updates. You've got the coaches only channel, not just myself, but of course the other top coaches that we have. You have the direct access to the questions on my trades. You're getting the updates of what I'm doing. Again, this is not hindsight. These are before the levels have been here. I'm giving the analysis. I'm giving the reasons of why I'm entering the trades. I mean, there's so, 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 so much if you want to be a good trader, you have got no excuse. All I say is I can do so much. And then the last 50% would be on you. You've got to put in the time. You've got to put it in the effort. You've got to put in some dedication because I will say this. I can make trading look very easy, but I've been doing this 12 years. I've been doing this a long time. So of course, my trades are looking easy. You have to acknowledge put in the time, put in the dedication. And there's no reason why you can also not fulfill your goals. And hopefully I'll end with that as a positive message. Hey, if you want to be alongside some other, you know, other successful, not even just traders, but a whole group of successful people, okay, then you can obviously come over and check out the community in here. I think, ah, this is actually something that I wanted to end with. I wanted to end with this post. Um, let me just do, oh, wow, 24 minutes. Yeah, let me end with this really quickly. Why not? I'm having a, I'm having a, I actually love making these videos. So, um, 
I'm actually just going to talk about this last part here, and that's about having fun. I talk about some of the winning and losing trades that I took, but I want to talk about this, having fun. When I'm having fun, when we've got, you know, or just in general, if you want to be, what makes a good trader? Of course, good technical analysis, but the fact of having fun. Love what you do. Yeah, that brings me confidence in my trades. When I'm having fun, when I'm in the zone, I'm not thinking about, you know, where's my stop? You know, I'm not thinking, overthinking anything. It's all very natural. It's all very much in the time as it's happening. Like just a flow. I'm in the zone. I'm in my flow. And I've got great confidence when I'm doing this. I'm having fun with confidence. And I believe that's what really can separate me from, from, you know, average Joe trader who's maybe doing doing this one, two, three years. When you've been pushing on plus 10 years, you really just have this feel. And I know some people that might be like, oh, I don't want to be doing this for 10 years. Think of the long term. Like, think where you are today. Just think about it. Where are you today in your trading journey? And just think where you're going to be in 10 years time. And I know some people hate to think about so far in the future, but just think of that. Even, even one year from now, think where you are today. The insights and knowledge that you have access to and how that can spring you to the next level in one year, two years, three years, 10 years. Just think about that. I think if you think hard enough and really acknowledge what you have available to you today, um, wow, you are, I, I want to say you're, you're in a very good position. Let's just say that. Good, good, good position. So if you want to learn more, come over to the website. Everything you could ever need is over here learning to trade, asking me direct questions, okay, getting in on the coaches only channel, that's obviously for the champions, the contenders have access to all the educational material, if you want that, that's over at chartchampions.com, we'll be more than happy to have you inside our community, if you want to come over and, and give it a go, so thank you ever so much, really, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, thank you, hope you've really enjoyed this video, because I truly enjoy, I literally just enjoy making these videos, enjoy sharing what I know. For me, this is, this is, this is part of the game. It's, it's, it's great to be in this community. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed. I hope you've learned something. We're taking losses. We're taking winners. Keep the losses small, the winners big and bring home that bank. Thank you ever so much, everybody. I'll catch you in the next video and CC Paul. Send their regards. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Oh, and of course, I'll end with a disclaimer. No financial advice. Just an education, entertainment video only. Thank you, everybody. And catch you in the next one. Goodbye.